good, good job. You guys were by far my best class. I don't know if it was my excellent story of the, of the sporting goods store, but you guys actually worked through those examples, which is pretty good, all right? It's exactly what I was looking for for you guys to be able to do. So I just want to end the class real quick, Connor, so I can finish this. This is the last problem. So I'd like to just go over this to make sure that everybody at least has their answers and also to explain. And if I, if I go over something at a point that maybe you don't understand or didn't see where I got through this, um, then please let me know. The first thing, guys, they're asking us to solve between 0 and 2 pi. All right? Solving means that I'm going to have a variable set equal to some value, right? So that means I need to isolate these variables here. Now, the next thing I see, Miranda, is that I have two. Well, it's pretty easy when you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, right? I understand that. But you're still not doing what you need to be doing. So exactly. So you have sine, you have the sum, and you have the difference, all right? So therefore, we're going to apply both of these problems. So you have sine of u plus v. That formula is sine of u times cosine of v uh, plus cosine of u times sine of v. We also have the difference. So that's going to be sine of u minus v, which is equal to the sine of u times the cosine of v minus cosine of u times the sine of v. All right? Now, the next thing that I would recommend So the next thing that I'd represent to do is I'd label my x and I'd label, I'm sorry, my u and my v. All right? Aaron and Nathaniel, let's just wait until the end on this one, OK? Because this is my time, my time. I gave you guys your time. And you guys did a great job. So now what we can do is just plug in our values, right? We now know for this is going to be, I'll put this back in black, so sine of u. Right? Well, u in this case is x times the cosine of v times the cosine of uh, cosine of v, which is pi over two, and then that's going to be plus the sine of v. I'm sorry, the cosine of v, which is pi over two, times the sine of u, which is um, uh, cosine of u. Cosine of v, that's cosine of x. Sorry, cosine of u times sine of v. Now, here's where a lot of you guys are going to make mistakes. Notice in this equation it says subtract, right? So you put in your subtraction sign. But notice, guys, this is going to turn into an expression with multiple monomers, right? So remember, when you subtract an expression, you have to distribute that subtraction sign. The major mistake that students will make is they will not put this new expression in parentheses, or they'll just simply forget to distribute. So I'm going to put this in parentheses, and then I'll rewrite the new expression, which is sine of, uh, sine of uh, u, which is x, times cosine of v, which is pi halves. Make sure you guys note that it's the positive pi halves, and then minus. Uh, cosine of x times the sine of pi halves. And that equals square root of 3. All right, so now um, one thing I can do is now I would distribute this. So distribute this, that makes that negative, and now that's going to make that positive. Does everybody understand what I did? OK, I just distributed that. Now, what's kind of cool about this is I notice these two expressions are exactly the same. Sometimes you guys might have already simplified these, but you can also see before I even simplify, before I even do any work, that is exactly the same as that. One's positive, one's negative, right? So therefore, what I have is 2 cosine of x times sine of pi halves equals the square root of 3. And what? Do you understand how these added to 0? Same thing. One's positive, one's negative. These are also the same thing, but they're both positive. It's like x plus x is 2x. So it's 2. It doesn't, you don't need to. 
3 times 2 times 4 is the same thing as 4 times 2 times 3. It doesn't matter how I multiply them. It's 2 times cosine of x times sine of pi halves. It doesn't matter how, which order you do. So now let's go and evaluate for the sine of pi halves. So if here's my initial side, pi halves is right up there, which is at the coordinate point of 0, 1. So sine of pi halves is the y coordinate, which is 1. So therefore, I have 2 cosine of x times 1 equals the square root of 3. Again, 1 times really cosine of x doesn't really matter. It's not going to do anything for us. So now we have 2 sine, 2 cosine of x equals the square root of 3. Now, again, it says to solve, right? We need to isolate our variable. We've done a great job bringing this all down to this, but we're almost there. We're at the tail end. So I divide by 2. And what I have is cosine of x equals the square root of 3 over 2. Now, flip it over. Did you get the other part? So cosine of x equals the square root of 3 over 2. Now we need to evaluate for this. If you guys remember from 5.3, what we had a chapter test on and an exam on was solving for our angles. So what we're trying to do now is determine between 0 and 2 pi, what are the values of x, what are the angles, when my point, my coordinate for y is square root of 3 over 2. This point right here, because if that's 0 comma 1, this point is 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. What? Oh, it's x, right? Thank you. I knew that was wrong. Not really. But now I see that's x, right? Not the y. I was thinking y. So this point, which is square root of 3 over 2, comma 1 half. So what is that point? Well, that point is pi over 6. And then when else is my cosine going to be square root of 3 over 2? The only else is going to be down here, which is going to be all the way around, not to 2 pi, which would be 12 pi over 6. But at this point, so if this is pi over 6, this point is 11 pi over 6. So therefore, I can now say x equals, as a solution set, pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. OK? So you guys have